Everybody, it's Tyler here at Score Signature Event, checking in 11211X Celsius. Currently ranked number one as we're recording this, by the way, and they have a couple event wins already under their belt. So, congrats on a great season so far. But Celsius looking awesome here. Let's talk about some of the cool features on this robot. I uh, got a great anti jam uh, mecha and uh, code that we'll be talking about. And I want you to pay attention to their Lady Brown, utilizing some flex wheels on here, too, a little bit different from what we've seen with that. But we'll be giving a great overview of this, detailing uh, how they've come so far as well, talking about some mat strategy, uh, a little bit on their Mogo mat on their uh, Goal Rush and a lot more coming up here on Pits and Parts. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. True competitors know that every second counts. That's why Kettering University challenges you to dive in right away as a first year student. Participating in robotics programs helps Kettering students secure a valuable co-op. Whatever your interest, Kettering gives you more space to work faster and win faster. Learn more at kettering.edu slash vex. The Robotics Education and Competition Foundation provides fantastic programs for students from elementary school all the way through college. These include VEX, Aerial Drone Competition, Online Challenges, JROTC, Grow Powered, Scholarships, Certifications, and so much more. To discover these exciting opportunities, visit recf.org and get connected. Yeah, then let's start talking about your uh, drive chain and your chassis here. So we got a lot of great stuff to walk through. What do you want to cover first? All right, so our drive chain uses 36 tooth and 48 tooth gears. Can we flip the bot? And we also have four Omni 2.275 inch wheels. We don't have any traction wheels because we believe that traction wheels make it slower for turning. And our, Paul, our driver, Paul, is really good at driving really quick. And we think that mobility around the field is so important in this game, especially with getting the third Mogo and also the wall sticks. And for Autons, we use this odometry, we use this tracking wheel, and that makes it really consistent when we turn. And we've gotten four autonomous win points out of six matches today. Yeah, your AWP has been awesome so far on this. I do have to ask you on your drive, what means you only want to go with four wheels on it? I know I get going Omni, that totally makes sense to me, uh, but having only four wheels on it versus like six or eight that we send other robots. Yeah, so we also, besides the weight save, we, as I said, our, our driver Paul, he decided on this because he likes sitting into the field and you get that more traction and grip. And even though we do get pushed and slide around a lot, this means Paul can make like those drift turns that he's actually getting pretty good at. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I'm watching your last match, definitely true uh, with that, and you're able to score in the wall stakes really quick and everything, so definitely I think it's paid off good dividends for you on that. Paul, let's start talking about some of these uh, scoring mechanisms on here. Uh, I mean, just so much to break down from a uh, little bit different uh, type of lady brown to your anti-jam and a lot more. What do you want to cover? Um, yeah, so I'll just start off with our mogul mech. So you'll see that our uh, mogul mech is kind of wide compared to others, so we actually can't clamp on corners right now, but what we do to account for that is we have these free-spinning rollers on the corner, so if we drive fast enough while the mogul is at an angle, it just auto correct itself. So I don't really have to worry about that as a driver and an autonomous. It just has to be slightly offset for the mogul mech to work. And just moving on to the intake, we just have a standard one motor intake that's connected to both the front stage and the hooks. And um, yeah, so we just use these vertical uh, vertical rams that reduce friction because they reduce surface area. And for our hooks, we actually had four four hooks that were evenly spaced out before, but we noticed that when one hook was flipping a ring at the top and there was another hook directly at the bottom, it would slow down a lot because sometimes it would grab another hook at the bottom at the same time it's trying to flip a goal. Um, so we actually removed one hook and just did three because it means that when it's scoring one run ring at the top, it's not grabbing onto another goal at the bottom, which helped a lot with the um, Auton consistency and like just scoring on mobile goals. And yeah, so just moving on to our lift, we have a one to, three ratio, one to three gear ratio with a 200 RPM motor. And the reason we don't use 5.5 volt motors is so that um, it doesn't burn out easier, it's faster, just more powerful. And it gives us the chance to potentially de-score two rings with our later round at a time. And um, just covering our actual like holder for the rings. Um, so we actually use flex wheels instead of mesh or like vex foam because they're a lot more firm, like they don't move as much. Um, but at the same time, it can be a little hard for the ring to be st like fully stuck in there. So what we, uh, Anthony can actually cover this a little bit more, but what we do is just, we have an anti-jam. So the, you'll see the hook go back forward, go back and forward. Even if our lady bound is up, we can still intake another, can you push that in? Yeah. We can uh, still intake one more ring. And we can just hold this lady brown um, up while we're scoring on a mobile goal, or we can either just do two at a time really easily without the uh, like heavier like two ring lady brown. 
And yeah, I think that's it for that. I really like the overall build quality that's going to this. I mean, this, I think, is just a very efficient robot for things. There's nothing just overly complex or anything like that. It's just done really, really well. Yeah. When you're looking at you know competing here at SCORE and that sort of thing, what do you think has attributed to some of your success as a team overall in terms of competition? Um, yeah, so we're just getting so much like support from like people in SoCal. Like, um, like whether we have a problem with coding or building, we're always getting support, um, like tips from other teams. Um, yeah, otherwise for a build quality, we just try to go simple um, and like light. Um, we don't try to make too many sacrifices with lightweight saving. Um, it's better to have your bot not break um, than have like a really slow bot or fast bot. Um, but yeah, that's we just focus on like simple bracing, not over brace, not under brace, just stuff like that. Shiny, let's talk about on your uh, bot and notice the uh, Gold Rush mech. Now, I saw during matches, definitely one of the longer uh, Doinker type mechs we've seen with that as well, too, and working so well for that. So, just talking about that, and then we're going to go into some match strategy and how else you're approaching a match, too. Yeah, so basically, as you can see, there's like the plexi on this side of this claw, and so it helps us clear rings in the corner. But you can also notice that it's not too big, so we won't get called out for SG6. Um, and at the same time, we're planning on using this claw for elims, so we'll we'll be able to utilize our goal rush during that time. And so that kind of goes into our strategy because right now we're not running our goal rush during um, matches because we are prioritizing um, auto on one point, and so that means that we have to go for like a consistent like two to three rings on each goal and like the alliance take of course and so after that because we have we get the alliance take during Auton um, we don't need to worry about it during the match and after that we just prioritize getting the positive corner and then after that getting the third goal and then obviously the wall stakes and as um, Anthony and Paul mentioned like every everything that went into the wall stake mech and like our intake just like helps us during the match for example like if we're being defended on um, and we have an extra ring in the intake we'll be able to just kind of if this ring falls off this can go right back into it and then we'll just score without having to go out and find a ring for it and stuff like that. I love the big focus on AWP, especially here at a SIG. You know, it's more difficult to get one, but even more so on top of that, it's just becomes so much more important uh, almost than, you know, winning autonomous in general, right? Getting that win point for that. So, and I think that for your team, why we've seen so much success from you all is that you've done such a great job with AWP here uh, and just overall great match strategy as well, too. So, Celsius, thank you so much for taking time to tell us more about this. What a clean robot you built here. And we can't wait to see the final results here at SCORE. And of course, good luck throughout the rest of the season as well, thank too. You. Thanks for taking the time. Thank you. Thank you. The Robotics Education and Competition Foundation provides fantastic programs for students from elementary school all the way through college. These include VEX, Aerial Drone Competition, Online Challenges, JROTC, Girl Powered, Scholarships, Certifications, and so much more. To discover these exciting opportunities, visit recf.org and get connected. True competitors know that every second counts. That's why Kettering University challenges you to dive in right away as a first-year student. Participating in robotics programs helps Kettering students secure a valuable co-op. Whatever your interests, Kettering gives you more space to work faster and win faster. Learn more at kettering.edu vex.